Look at all this junk. I can't believe pre-war people wasted their money on mountains of useless stuff like this. They called it consumerism. The back when times, folk were compelled to accumulate material possessions as a way to escape the emptiness of their lives. Nuka World souvenir cups, souvenir magnets, toy cars, teddy bears. Pre-war America was both prosperous and terrifying. Many people suffered from a constant sense of unfulfillment. Nothing they bought could fill the void inside them, so they kept buying more and more, always hoping the next purchase would be exactly what they needed to feel complete. Souvenir photo t-shirts. What do you suppose this thing did? Folk would gather the family around this hollow camera, get a picture of mom, dad, and the little tykes. Then that contraption would spit out a clean new t-shirt with the picture printed right on it. Then they could go home and show all the neighbors what a great time they had at Nuka World. Well, gee, that's actually kind of cool. I sure would love to show everyone back in California what a great time I had here on the East Coast. What would people pay for a souvenir t-shirt? Well, you gotta understand, by the late 21st century, inflation was out of control. So folk would have to pay two or three hundred dollars for something like this. Whoa, those prices are outrageous. Maybe I can hack the internal clock on this machine and trick it into thinking it's the early 21st century, years before the Great War, when inflation wasn't so bad. Then it'll make us assured at prices adjusted for the lower rate of inflation. Let's see, how about 20 years before the Great War? The adjusted price is $31.99. Golly, that still sounds a little high. How about the value of a dollar 40 years before the Great War? adjusted for inflation that was only $26.99. Oh, I think you can do a little better than that. Okay, let's try 61 years before the Great War. Adjusted for the value of a dollar way back then, this shirt would only cost $21.99. Wow, that's an astonishingly reasonable price for a high-quality garment made of 100% ring-spun cotton. And it has a picture of my handsome mug on it, along with the phrase I say on occasion. I suddenly understand what you meant by the endless pursuit of material possessions. It's as though this shirt completes me. And it identifies you as a person who appreciates and supports quality storytelling. I can finally stop my endless wanderings across the wasteland. Want to go ride the giant teacups? You bet. This is great! You know, the Ferris wheel was invented by a man named George Washington Gale Ferris Jr. They built the first one for the Chicago World's Fair. Oh, please tell me more. You're being sarcastic. No shit, Sherlock. Few know this, but the original Ferris wheel was supposed to be America's answer to the Eiffel Tower, which stood in Paris, France. I can't hear you! Old World America prided themselves as inventors, and so was the city of Chicago that commissioned the project. <sighs> Once completed, the Chicago Ferris wheel would be a marvel of pre-war engineering and steel forging. It rotated around a 70-ton axle manufactured by the steel companies in Pittsburgh, the place we call the Pit. I'm afraid if I step on, it might collapse. Then don't step on it. But I really wanna. When they tried to match the ranger with big iron on her hip, big iron on her hip. Never had anyone immortalize me in song before. You're a man of hidden talents. Yup. You gonna sing me a ballad about Edna? Requiem. A song for the dead is a requiem, not a ballad. I thought this place was just about Nuka-Cola. Why'd they put all this other stuff here? The Cowboy Zone, Candy Kingdom, Spaceland, the zoo? Not relevant to the mission. We'll discuss the plan after we recon Safari Adventure. I need to verify something there before we can track the android. So, that fish soda up in Maine, was that made by the same people that made Nuka-Cola? Of course not. Vim was manufactured by a rival beverage company, 
Although, like most other successful soft drink companies in the 21st century, Vim was targeted by John Caleb Bradburton. Go on. Oh, if you want to hear a story so bad, tell one yourself. Okay. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there was a kingdom of candy. It was ruled by King Cola from a throne of cherry, although most people called him John Caleb Bradbury. Bradburton. John Caleb Bradburton. J.C. to some. One day, King Cola's kingdom was visited by a beautiful queen named Helen. Queen Helen was on a quest to capture an evil neer do well the cruel Lord Cyborg. The queen was accompanied by her friends, Princess Daisy, Sir Storyteller, and Lady Edna, the squire. They chased this evil man to a magical land where the rivers flowed with soda pop. But they found the kingdom had been overrun with zombies who had gotten inside it somehow. They were probably here since before the war, the original employees of the park. Fair point. Still, this castle looks like it's made out of cardboard and plastic. Most likely took shelter in the utility corridors beneath the park a hidden city where the cast members could go about the unglamorous drudge work of maintaining the park without breaking the illusion of this magical kingdom. I bet the tunnels had food, medical supplies, equipment for maintaining the park. They could survive there for centuries and never need to scavenge outside. You were saying something about a beautiful fairy tale queen? When the queen and her attendants arrived, the villagers had all turned into monsters. So she went. Maybe not all of them. On my way into Nuka World, I passed through the town of Bradburn, up north, on a holotape there, near the body of a dead ghoul. Seems that at least one of them left the kingdom and tried to find a cure before going feral. I left the tape where I found it. It was meant for someone else. Someone who might still be in there. A lonely monarch of a ruined kingdom, sitting on a throne before a court of decaying subjects hoping in vain to restore the dead to life again. We can repair Edna and Daisy. After we find the android. Cyborg. He likes to be called Cyborg V13. Got angry when I called him an android. Don't care what the android wants to be called. Tell me about your queen and her knight. The queen's entourage took a leisurely stroll around the zombie castle, only to discover another castle which was filled with glowing blue mire lurks, of course. Nuka lurks. Saw a few of them in the capital wasteland about 10 years ago. Should have known would find them here too. They've mutated due to the strontium-90 effluvia from the Nuka cola plant. Lethal. Figured it wasn't the pomegranate that made it glow. People in the old world thought this park was Bradburton's greatest achievement. But I think old J.C. had the pieces of some greater plan hidden beneath it. As the end drew near, he was less interested in buying up rival soda companies and more in surviving the inevitable. I have seen hints about a private vault, even found holotapes that talk about a secret project that made quantum possible as a civilian application. All these innovations could have been intended as bartering chips so that Brad Burton could demand favors from the military. Stop trying to talk me out of it. We both know the enemy is developing chemical and biological weapons, and that my beverageers are the top organic chemists in the world. Our countries are in a race where no one comes in second, General. So you need to ask yourself, can you really afford to stand here and say no? Old world marketing. Almost convinced me that JC was America's kindly old uncle. Well, Uncle J.C. used his clout with Robco to fill the galactic zone with their robots, customized for Nuka World. All demilitarized and safe. Heh, that thing has enough firepower to kill tipsy cinemaphiles by the thousands. Bradbert knew what was coming, and a plan to outlast Armageddon in his own personal utopia, backed by a private army if push came to shove and all of his wealth and influence came from selling a product that he knew was addictive and unhealthy. Hey now, you're making him sound like a jet pusher out of New Reno. 210 years after this place capped its last bottle of soda, people are still getting hooked on Brad Burton's secret blend of fruit juices, radioactive isotopes, 
toxic chemicals. If there's any justice in this wasteland, Brad Burton is in his own private hell right now. So how's your fairy tale end? The beautiful queen find the man she was chasing through the kingdom? I'll let you finish it. The zoo's right up ahead. The cyborg in there? Maybe, but the one thing he wants most in the world is inside there. I'm sure of that now. Those half death claw, half alligator creatures prove it. But that is. Oh, just cut to the chase. Your queen demands it. <laughs> <laughs>